Okay, well round four is in the books uh, here at uh, Edmonton Castrol Raceway. Got guest uh, host here, Steve Mathis, all the way up from uh, Las Vegas. Steve, how you doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm pumped to be here. Uh, off weekend in the States and nothing says off weekend, how to spend your off weekend, then come to Canada. And uh, you know, I haven't been out, I didn't go to a race last year. Happy to be in Edmonton, never been to this track before and hadn't been to this uh, city in 20 years. Well, cool, man. It's good to have you up here. Thank you very much for yeah. stepping in and doing this yeah. for us in Kyle's, Kyle and Ryan Lockhart's absence, so uh, we appreciate that. Uh, let's first off talk about the, the same thing we seem to talk about every week is the weather, the track conditions. Same thing. Yesterday, wasn't a cloud in the sky, really bad with the dust all day. Last night, we had some rain. We got here this morning. The track was nice and dark black. Looked like it was going to be really good. Stayed sunny for the rest, most of the day. Then we got some rain at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, I thought the track prep was, was excellent. It ripped up deep and watered good. Got a little dusty, but then right we got some little bit of rain to fix that. It wasn't perfect, but I think it was really good considering that when I heard from you guys on Saturday night was this thing's going to be a dust bowl. And uh, kudos to the track guys, uh, Matt and Brett Lee, I think it was, who did a lot of it. Uh, they did a great job. Yeah, they did a lot of it. I know they were a bit short staffed and everything, and they did what they could, and uh, they got lucky, I think, and uh, worked really, really hard, and it, it did turn out pretty good. No dust issues or anything. But uh, yeah, let's move on to some of the action. Uh, what's yeah. going on for you in the MX2? Do you have anything? Uh, well, MX2, what I've been seeing is, uh, is Teddy Mayer and Jeremy uh, Medaglia show, and uh, I saw that today. I thought that that first moto, those two guys, I mean, they were sprinting for 30 minutes. It looked like neither one wanted to give an inch, and uh, both of those guys pulled away pretty easily. Uh, my guy KD Beats uh, struggled a bit in the first moto. Second moto, the rains came and it equaled things out a little bit, uh, and the track looked really, really technical and tricky for the rain, man. Those guys were sliding everywhere. Yeah, and some of the slick jump faces for sure. And our guy Beaton uh, had the nice lead. Tightened up, uh, Jeremy Medaglia had to stop for goggles and still incredibly came through and won it. So to me, Medaglia and Mayer uh, look like they're, they're on another level, look like they're riding great, and you know, that's what you guys have been seeing since the first three rounds. So. Yeah, for sure. And, and Jeremy finally took the win today, so he's really, really happy about that. Uh, gives him some momentum, as he said, heading into the Eastern rounds. How about uh, Topher Ingalls, too? Yeah, blew up his bike last week, was riding Tunisia Ruse, practice bike, got out there, did really, really well. Second moto, first turn, like nine or 11 spokes out of his front wheel. Oh, man, you know, that's what you love about Canadian motocross, folks. The guy doesn't ride all week because his bike blew up, shows up at the race, borrows a bike, a, a women's bike at that, goes out and maybe has his best ride of the year on it, completely unfamiliar. That's the wild card that is Canadian motocross, and I thought he rode great. Also, too, what about Jared Allison's third in the first moto? Uh, had Kyle beaten on him for a while, pulled away in the end, and, and got a third. Um, very, very tight at the Jared end. Jared or Parker, one of them, I don't know. It was but, Jared, yeah. definitely number 20, and then he had Dylan Kalen, number 22, yeah. there on the Omaha, right behind you him. Know, I came like, I, sorry to interrupt you. I came, no, away, no, I came, I came away impressed with Kalen. And with uh, Spencer Knowles. Spencer Knowles. Uh, I can't tell them apart on the track. Yeah. Both, you know, kind of similar riders, wearing the similar kind of gear. Um, but both of those guys, I thought, from where they had been, stepped up their level. Uh, from what I uh, what I remember of those two before. Yeah, no, absolutely. They're both extremely fast. They uh, Spencer, in one, you know, tends to hit the ground maybe a bit more than he would like to. When he stays up and gets a good start, that kid's as fast yeah, as like I think, anybody. I think he was steady. And and in the in the past, you'd see two laps of brilliance from him, and then a cartwheel and a yellow flag. And I think I didn't see the brilliance necessarily but a steady racer now who looked like and he faded before the times that I'd seen him he looked to be in shape looked to be a much better Spencer Knowles I think yeah no it was great the MX2 action was uh, fantastic right way back there were some great battles behind those top four or five there were some battles wheel to wheel the entire like groups of five and six riders going at it the whole moto let's move on to MX1 anything stand out for you there Matt Gerke, man, you guys have been saying it every week, you know, I talk to you guys about what's going on, and uh, he looks like a totally new guy. Um, I got a feel for Bobby Canari, led both motos and looked good, and I think it's a case of Bobby rode great, Matt rode greater. Uh, those two guys, you know, Colt, we'll get the Colt Fasciati problems with his shoulder, but uh, Matt looked like, I don't know if it's possible to wear down Bobby Canari because he's kind of a meathead animal guy, uh -huh. but it looks like, you know, he, he did. It looks like Matt wore him down, and, and good good job for Matt Gerke, man. He's a, he looks reborn up here this year. Yeah, yeah, they both, uh, we spoke to them afterwards, too, and they were saying how they both are going extremely fast. I mean, you wonder, like you mentioned, Colton Fasciati. I mean, he's, he's in that uh, third-place guy still, but uh, he's really, really sore with that shoulder. You know what? Um... I don't think Colton's happy with getting thirds and fourths. No. I don't think Andy White is happy with getting thirds and fourths. If I'm Colton Fasciati or Andy White, I just put him on the couch. Uh, I don't think you're getting much out of it. You may be doing possible more damage. That's what we're seeing Colton Fasciati is 70%, uh, 60% of what he can be. And uh, to me, 
there's no sense in that. I, I don't see the purpose in that. In do, if he keeps doing what happened today. Well, you know what I did? I made a bet with Donk. I said I bet Colton wins at least two or five Eastern rounds. I think I'm crazy. Yeah, Donkey gonna collect him. <laughs> Wasn't a big bet, don't worry. But uh, yeah, so that was uh, amazing action all the way along. I also want to mention too that uh, last week we've been mentioning about how uh, young Sean Robinson, number 46 there on the Yamaha, has been riding with a sore hand. Well, it turns out it has actually broken bones here in his metacarpals. He actually has three pins in it. So last week he rode to a ninth place with a smashed up hand hanging onto the bars. Who was it? Uh, Sean Robinson. Good job, Sean. Yeah, amazing, that's amazing. That's, that's gnarly. How about uh, Dusty Clatt right now? I think. Uh, you know, we have uh, Phil Nicoletti in the USA that seems to have bad luck every weekend. My guy for bad luck this year, a piano falling on him, or uh, any, any chance he can would be Dusty Clatt. Broken shifter today, cup crashes last week, uh, crappy mud race in the first week. Dusty Clatt, I haven't seen what he can be. It's got to be frustrating for him. He's saying the right things to me, to you, mm -hmm. but inside i got to think that he's got to be pretty frustrated. Yeah, definitely. I mean, those two guys were obviously so dominant in the past few years, right? One and two by, you know, country mile kind of thing, and now to be where they are, they're not happy, but uh, heading east, whole new, whole new season perhaps. Well, and then talking to Dusty uh, after the race, he thinks he's going to stay out east a little bit and do uh, get used to the weather. It's more humid out there. Absolutely. And he's going to stay back there and really focus on uh, riding, and, and that can't do anything but, but help, I think. Um, like I said, I'm surprised that he's that far off the pace, to be honest. Yeah, well, we went and had a chat with some of these guys, so let's go see uh, see what they had to say. And Steve, I just want to say thank you very much, and uh, welcome back to Canada. What's next for you? Uh, weekend off, and the U.S. series picks up. I'm happy to be here. I'm pumped to be here. They got Hawkins cheesies in Canada. They don't have them in the U.S., and that's a good enough reason. Okay, let's go get a blizzard. Okay, we got MX1 overall winner here, Matt. Call me Gerky. Gerky, what, uh, it's almost unbeatable, man. You were back a little bit, then you came up, you passed, you got the overall again. Tell us about how your weekend went here. Yeah, it was tough today. Um, I didn't get the greatest starts, but I felt good working my way through the pack. And both motos caught Bobby, and then we had a battle going both motos. And luckily, I got the better end of it, both motos. Yeah, I heard you guys. Oh, I'm sorry. I heard you guys talking over there that you guys are, you guys both commented. I think we're going really fast. Does it feel like you guys are just up to your game, or what's going on out there? Yeah, I think so. We're both pushing the whole 35 minutes. I, I, I was feeling this good at the beginning, but he's definitely picked it up. So, I mean, it's good for both of us. Now we're pushing each other till the end, and I think we're both going really fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, now I noticed uh, Bobby had his goggles off there in that second one. You were able to keep yours on the entire time. That obviously is a big factor in this kind of conditions. Yeah, definitely. It's no fun riding without goggles, and I, it was getting hard to see in mine too, but I didn't want to take them off. I just went with it. I'm glad I did. Yeah, yeah so now you're obviously known as a sand specialist. A lot of the other guys who you've been beating consistently are looking forward to heading east to tracks like Gopher. Well, you actually do really well at Gopher, so what are your thoughts with the break and then heading east? Yeah, I mean, I'm pumped on the break. I get to relax a little because I've been training hard and then relax a couple days and then get back to training. And uh, yeah, Gopher, I mean, I won there last year, both motos, and always been good in the sand, so it should be fun. All right, man, well, thanks for chatting with us. Enjoy your break, and we'll, uh, we'll catch you in Gopher Dunes. All right, thanks. Okay, filling in for uh, injured rider Kyle McGlynn, we got Zeb Dennis here. Zeb, you came flying in here for the weekend, you went out and raced. I don't think you're expecting what happened to actually happen. Tell us about uh, your day here today. Oh man, I'm uh, cloud nine right now. I had a pretty good day, so the first moto I ended up 12th with the crash a couple laps in. Um, I was excited about that and happy with that. Felt good, felt, felt decently strong, and uh, second moto went even better. Uh, good start. I actually battled with Colton for the lead for a few laps. I think I came across in the lead the first lap, so very unusual for me. First time leading a national, first time ever being up front in the hunt with those guys, so just kind of telling myself not to crash, you know, ride, 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 and it actually worked out pretty good. I stayed, I stayed loose and uh, was able to pretty much control where I was, and then uh, a little slip, excuse me, a little slip up, I don't know, probably five laps in, got me back to about eighth. And I, I pushed back to sixth or seventh, so I think we got a seventh in the second moto. Yeah, we well, got to be obviously really happy with oh, that. So now, man. now we got a week off or a couple weeks off actually. But I know next week at Moto Park where you're involved, there's a big race next weekend. Are you going to be involved in that? Will you actually be riding? Yeah, for sure. We'll be doing. I'm, I'm going to be track maintenance through the week. I actually I fly home tonight. We start camps on Monday, um, so I'll be the main instructor there for Monday to Friday, and then we'll do track prep for the next couple of days, and I'll get back on a bike Sunday. And I think we have a week off before Gopher after that and uh, do some motos, and I, I enjoy the sand. I don't really enjoy the clay, so hopefully Gopher goes even better, you know? Cool, man, so what is the plan? Are you actually heading all the way to the East Coast? We plan on doing the majority of the East Coast. I guess the only one, you know, kind of up in the air right now is Moncton, but uh, 
if things keep, if the ball keeps rolling the way it is right now, then I'm going to be doing all of them and just uh, try to get points, get points. So it should be, should be good. Well, that's cool, man. It was great to see you out there doing Thank so well. So see you next time. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, hey, MX1 rider Tyler Medallia. Tyler, tell us about how your uh, day went here. Uh, it went pretty good. Uh, the first moto was, wasn't the best. I mean, like, I told Ken to put on the pit board just my lap times, and I ended up, like, my lap times were, like, the same every lap. And I was like, I just couldn't, I was riding by myself. I just couldn't get, like, that little bit extra to get dusty. And then, yeah, and it was kind of a little bit frustrating, and the roost was just deadly. And I came, like, off the start, Matt, Matt's, uh, bar hooked my bar uh, my handguard and kind of pulled my bars all janky but um <laughs> yeah i just salvaged it and then the second moto i had another bad start because i tried a different approach going more wide and it didn't work at all hmm. and then i worked my way up and uh started clicking in the laps and my lap time started dropping towards the end and i seen colt and i started catching him and made the pass and it was good i just wish i had a start so i could have raced with the, the other two yeah, so now uh, you should be sitting in a very, very close battle for third with Colton. What do you do over the break to get uh, ready for Gopher Dunes? Uh, you know, I feel I feel good. Uh, my body's good. My bike's good. You know, I'm going to go home and ride sand. Um, so I'm definitely looking forward to that, riding some sand for a bit and ride my road bike. And, uh, yeah, just, you know, keep on my schedule. And I'm definitely looking forward to the East Coast tracks just because they're, you know, obviously being more familiar with them and uh, just more comfortable, less travel. So I'll be good. All right, now tomorrow I've got to actually hop in that white van and try to make it back to Ontario. <laughs> Do you have any tips for me? Yeah, keep it to the boards. <laughs> All right, man, enjoy the break, and we'll see you at Gopher. Thanks. Okay, we got MX2 overall winner, Jeremy. You went 2-1. You had a great day. You are in great battles the whole time. Tell us about it. Yeah, the uh, first moto was pretty, pretty gnarly. Um, I would say that it was probably a 30-minute full-blown sprint between me and Teddy, and for me it was my closest moto to him because the last couple weekends he, uh, you know, he was going fast, and... Maybe it was a little faster, so to be on his pace and you know to push him into some mistakes was good. And second moto was uh, we both almost got caught in the gate because it was a late drop, and I uh, just put my head down. Actually decided to go for a roll off last minute. Roll off broke second lap. Came in for a goggles change, couldn't believe it, and then uh, you know put the hammer down, and got up to beaten, and then got the overall. Yes, have you ever done that before? Pull in for a pit stop and gone out and won a moto? Uh, yeah, the first moto of the year, actually. I, I came in for a goggle swap. Uh, this time, the boys were a, bit, a little bit more ready, so uh, I, got, I made sure I got a little bit of gap. I think it was on Spencer, and then uh, I came in. They, you know, We swapped the goggles out, and by that time, beaten, I think, put maybe 10, 15 seconds, and just uh, slowly worked, worked the gap down to nothing. Yeah, so what do you take from this? I mean, Teddy's been pretty tough to beat this whole year so far. You finally took the overall. We're heading east. We got a bit of a break. Uh, what do you do heading forward here? Yeah, well, you know, take a, maybe this week off, a couple of days just to relax because it's been, uh, you know, pretty stressful the last four four weeks with flying and everything. So it just means a lot to get that win going into the break because I know, uh, you know, he's mentioned a couple times. He sounds like he's a little bit stressed out going into the East Coast because he knows that's where I've grown up. So, you know, my tracks with the heat and everything, uh, I'm really looking forward to it. So yeah, just keep doing the same things and uh, have fun. Get ready for Gophers. All right, well, uh, enjoy your break, and we'll see you at Gopher Dunes. Thank you very much. We're here with leading edge Kawasaki's Kyle Beaton. Beats uh, my first race of the year. I was looking for the breakout ride, and I almost got in the second moto. Uh, good job. Thank you. Yeah, I think you're going to have to come to the rest maybe. Hey, it might be my good luck charm. Well, maybe I would. you could say that, but then what happened in the first moto when you weren't the Beaton that we know and love? I didn't see you before that. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so I saw you after the first moto, and it helped. Well, hey, uh, on a serious note, though, I've been talking to you a little bit. i expecting you to be a little more discouraged, but you always tell me, hey, I'm healthy, I made it through the two rounds, and let's not forget you missed the last two seasons. So it really is important to you to stay healthy. Yeah, I mean, it, it has been a, a long last three years, and uh, it feels good to be at every race so far this year. And, uh, I mean, I'm not riding to where I know I can or, or want to, but i got to look at the positives and take those away from each weekend and just work on them during the week. And so today, for you third overall, it's a step. Uh, you're getting closer to the to Mayor Medaglia battle. Yeah, just uh, those guys are riding unbelievable this year. And uh, I just got to ride the way I know I can and uh, just keep plugging away, and I'll get it. All right, folks, he's Kyle's beaten. I'm Steve Mathis. Here we are at Edmonton. All right, we got uh, MX1 competitor Morgan Berger out of Idaho. Morgan, you're sitting in, uh, you got fifth today, I think, overall. Yeah. Tell us about how your day went. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> um, <laughs> day went good. Um, I was just kind of, I got, I think I qualified eighth in practice and, uh, I was feeling pretty good. The track was, a, the mud was crazy. I couldn't, I couldn't get used to it, but 
practice went good, and then uh, my first moto got caught up with that roost, and man, it killed me. So I think I, I fell back, and then I ran up to ninth in the first moto, and then uh, second moto, I ripped a good start and got second, and uh, second out of the start, and then uh, just kind of worked from there and ended up fifth in that moto. So yeah, dude, it went really good. Now, we got to know you a little bit last year. Uh, you had some pretty outstanding uh, rides in the MX2 class. Now, this year, you seem to be even, uh, even stepped it up a little bit more. Is there something different? Do you just ride the big bike better, or what's, uh, what's up? Um, yeah, no, I, I feel really comfortable on a 450. Um, just cause you can go out there and relax a little bit more. And uh, with the 250, we just didn't really have the money to put into it to make a fast bike to keep up with the factory guys. So figured 450, you know, pays out better. It's going to help me out a little bit more. So... We went that route, and yeah, everything went good. Okay, so now we've got two weeks off. What, uh, what do you do? You're obviously heading east, but uh, what do you do for the next couple? Um, I'll just head home and, uh, I don't know, try to find a couple seconds so I can get up there with Bobby and them. But uh, head home, uh, just do some riding, and uh, try to figure out how to get to east, you know. And, uh, yeah, definitely go work out with my trainer, Jed Snelson, with the garage, and, uh, yeah, just try to get east. Cool, man. Yeah, so you're a guy in your position shouldn't be struggling to get these. So if someone wants to get a hold of you and uh, maybe give you some support, how do they get a hold of you? Uh, you can hit me up at bbrmotocross at msn.com or uh, you can call me at 208-891-1544. I mean, yeah, I just need to get east and then hopefully, uh, yeah, it'll bring something for next year. All right, man. Well, congratulations. You're doing really well and we really hope to see you east. Hey, I appreciate it, man. Thanks. Uh, no, I just I also wanted to thank all my sponsors, or at least a couple of them. OTW Safety, they've been helping me out a ton. Of course, my mom, my dad, my girlfriend, my brother, Insidious, uh, Fly, Western Power Sports, Duvall Racing, and uh, yeah, just can't think of any more, but yeah, I appreciate all their help. All right, well, nice talking with you, and we'll hopefully we'll see you in Gopher Dunes. All right, thanks, man. <laughs> and then like the reverse and then you go back up anyway, hey stand up oh yeah <laughs>